Hi uh, guys, Richard here. I'm one of those rare people who actually likes the old Crate and Blue Voodoo amps. And I'm talking the old, the first generation, the ones that were made uh, in America um, and not of completely Chinese parts. And I think part of that is nostalgia. Like when I was a kid, I saw these things come out in, like when they were brand new, come out in the music stores. And they were just awesome. The heads were just bigger than any other tube heads out there. And I really liked the sound of them, in part due to the uh, oversized cabs they made with them that were actually loaded with Celestians. So I was pretty excited to get this Crate BV50H, not the 60 watt that became a little bit popular. This was a 50 watt head and it was very, very early on. Now I got this from Guitar Center for pretty cheap and I had already planned on retubing the thing anyway but I wanted to do a comparison of the tubes that were in there versus the tubes that I was going to put in there. Let me show you what happened. When I unpacked this amp this tube was inside the chassis rolling around and you can see it's cracked this big old crack right here these are some old soft techs it would have been cool to hear how they sounded but obviously can't do anything with it with that going on oddly enough my new tubes came in today now I'm a little upset at Guitar Center because you know anytime I bought a tube amp from them it's the same issue they never do anything to keep the tubes from rolling around. I, I get it, they don't want to pull them out and, you know, have people install them incorrectly or whatever in their amp and screw them up. But, man, could they put some foam under them or just anything? Anything would be better than nothing. So I went a little farther. I did some digging inside the amp. It looks like it's been maybe modded. The whole, entire line out is gone. And this was... I was kind of excited about it because the line out on this amp is built in after the speaker stage. So it's sort of an early speaker emulation as well. That would have been cool to play with. It's gone for some reason. And there's a couple other wires that have been labeled by some masking tape and black marker. and I, I'm not real sure what's going on. Pardon the cat noise. I'm in my living room. We're going to get rid of these old power tubes replace them with some Tung Soul 606Gs and this is the more modern upgraded version of the big bottle that uh, is built to 606GC spec which this amp can run 606GCs. What's kind of interesting about this amp too is it has auto biasing. So let me get these guys put in and then we'll go over the preamp tubes. So I'm going to put these preamp tubes in before I go ahead any farther because uh, it would be easier without these big bottles in the way anyway. So in my V1 position I'm going to be putting in this Genelex Gold Lion tube. A little bit odd. This is the first time I've ever decided to drop the money on one and it was simply because the reviews were astounding and who knows maybe that's a placebo effect but I will say this it is a heavier tube than most other 12AX7s I have come across. So you see the gold line ECC83. These tongue soles are going to be in my V2 and V3 positions, so phase inverter. Which, by the way, V1, valve 1, the, the first tube in your amp is generally regarded as your most important tube because it feeds the rest of the amp. So the signal uh, goes from your guitar input into this guy and everything else is fed off of this. So if you want to change the tone of your amp, V1 is the first tube I would go to to do so. Which is why I got the best tube that I could afford. Let me get these guys installed and I'll be right back. Okay, so ultimately it's just much easier to, to change these tubes when you take the chassis out. So in V1, he has whoever owned it before me, she, he, I don't know has a JJ's tube, a 5751, which is, I think, a lower gain uh, version of a 12x7. Not sure about that. You guys can correct me. I'm not a tube guru by any means. V2 
is a soft tech. I try to not wiggle them too much when I take them out because I don't want to hurt the sockets. Alright, and another soft tech in V3. Sorry about the cat noise over there. So we're going to put the gold line in V1. Okay, these are installed. I'm going to put the chassis back in before I put the uh, big bottles in because I don't want to break them manhandling the chassis in there. So just cleaning all the oil off the tubes. Uh, what I like to do, I'll take old tubes that are still good. I think this is good. Put them back in the box. And I'll just write used on the box. And I usually put like how many hours they've been used or whatever. But not with this one. This one's broken. We need to find something to do with this. Okay, so currently we are unsure if this amp even works. So I'm going to connect the IEC cable. I have it connected to an 8 ohm load, which what's cool about this amp is it's very clear. Um, you have this section where you can connect two 16 ohm cabs, or here where you can connect two 8 ohm, and then it will show you, you can connect one single 4 ohm or one single 8 ohm. It doesn't get clearer than that. I think that's a pretty cool feature. Alright, so now we're plugged in. I'm going to flip the power on and leave the standby off for about 30 seconds. Okay, I heard the power kick on. You can see our heaters going. In just a second, I'm going to click the standby off. Now, I don't have anything connected to this just yet. As far as the guitar goes, the volumes are down. We're just sort of diagnosing. I'm letting things warm up. So I'm going to flip the standby off. Okay, I don't know if you guys heard that little pop, but I did. And I can hear that there is power running to the cab down here. I have a lot of concerns about the amp, especially after seeing that somebody had tampered with the inside of it. But it shows you never know what you're going to get from Guitar Center. I'm not going to be able to test anything loud tonight. I'm going to hook up a guitar and see if we get anything through it. We'll do that here in just a second. So I'm going to let these warm up and then we'll see if we get any usable guitar tone through it. Alright guys, I do apologize about the lighting. It's like 1am so I'm kind of in my living room by myself, everybody's asleep. It's uh, It's got sound. You know, it's actually sounds fairly good, but I can't really crank it up. I have my volume down to like 0.5, but um, it's going through my little Forsyth Procyon 112, which if uh, you've seen my channel, you've probably seen it before, this little cab I built. Now I'm just playing with my fingers and a neck pickup on a guitar that I haven't really done a lot of work on yet so it's not going to sound great anyway. It's got a really nice round sound to it. Um, let's see if this reverb works. So it does. It's got a little hum to it though. I should mention the speaker in this cab is an old uh, vintage Allen organ speaker from the 70s. It's like a 25 watt Alnico. So it's already a warm speaker. Okay, I am going to tempt fate and mess with this other channel real quick. <laughs> it's I, I'm just, I just can't do anything with it. It's, I have to keep it so quiet. And I really want to crank this up because tube amps sound great loud. But anyway... Let's switch channels. Here's the master for this channel. 
here's the gain. Okay, so crates get a lot of flack for having a uh, real sizzly distortion. And a lot of the, in my opinion, these blue voodoos, people would pair them with the wrong speakers. But anyway, so you can see we're on the gain channel now. With just a little bit of gain, it's not much different than clean. You get a little bit of breakup. Like that, just a little bit. So let's turn that up a little more. Switch to the bridge humbucker. I'm gonna turn up the gain a little more. Bear in mind, I'm not using a pick, so we probably don't have as much presence as we would normally have. Okay, so right now the gain is at about three. Still pretty warm considering it's a uh, it's a blue voodoo. Actually has less of that sizzly breakup than my BV120H has at that level. All right, so now we're halfway on the game. this master up so bad but I can't and you can see the guy or whoever AccuSan guy I don't know whoever had it before put different knobs on there's a couple knobs that shouldn't be here but at least it has knobs see I, I'm like below one on that master which is probably sucking out all the tone this up and open it up but this video was just kind of about trying to decipher whether or not it was going to work like I said it arrived with that broken tube I'm so glad this little head works um, I have a 2x12 coming when that gets here we are going to do a full-on review of this vintage crate blue voodoo 50 I am so stoked that it works. I'm stoked that the guy who modded it or girl who modded it didn't F it up. I get the feeling it's going to be a lot of fun to play with this amp. So I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, I will see you next time. Thanks again. Bye.